week and I'm ending it here hopefully turning this trip in before the end of the week uh, ends which it is 8 o'clock in the morning and I finally felt them moving around back there I've been here for six hours waiting for them to un unload me which worked out because I really wanted some some more sleep uh, Idaho to Florida then Florida to the tippy top of Mississippi that's where I've run and I've I've grossed eight thousand dollars to my truck this week sorry if you hear the reefer in the background it's been running non-stop on start stop because my doors have been open waiting for them to unload me grocery stuff that I'm supposed to protect from freezing but keep it 32 degrees so coming out of Idaho of course I take 80 all the way well for the first time in my driving career I had to chain up and I'll post up some of me working through that while I'm talking about that load it was crazy any loads that work with that amount of time on them I had six days to get it from Idaho basically I was in Oregon I was on the edge of Oregon and, and Idaho and I drove all the way through to Arcadia Florida which is pretty far south on off of 75 in Florida to drop this load well on the way I ended up having to uh, chain up as soon as I got on to 80 like right after I got out of Utah like I was getting off of Utah in Salt Lake and getting on to 80 right there in Salt Lake right around Salt Lake as soon as I got on there chain law was in effect so I spent about an hour and a half trying to get my freaking chains on my truck never done it before was never showed how to do it the front chains I don't even know how those work to be honest I don't have to watch a video on that I ended up foregoing the front chains uh, and I put all four chains on the back tires I drove about a mile and then they lifted the chain law so I ended up having to take them off I my jacket the brand new jacket I just bought is completely it looks like I look like a homeless person now uh, it was drenched my got snow in my boots so I had wet socks it was I don't know five degrees outside when I had to chain up I'm laying on the snow getting up under the tires to get them locked in I drive a couple miles of course it's freaking just go, 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 go. like it's it's a rough ride you're not supposed to go over like 20 to 30 miles an hour with the chains on and uh, I get about a mile or two down the road going slow as hell and I see other guys with their chains on just blasting past me going highway speeds with their chains on um, I ain't trying to jack my truck up man uh, as rough as it was when I wasn't on the snow nah so I drive about a mile, I get out, I check on my chains because I've never put them on before and I don't want them falling off and getting wrapped up in the drive shaft or anything. Uh, one of the sides of my tire was like, it was coming off a little bit. So I try to, you know, back up and forward and back up and forward and try to get it fixed and I finally got it worked around again. And that didn't sound good. God damn. Sound like a forklift fell over in his truck. But uh, so I'm trying to work that out. I drive another mile or so up the road, and the front side driver tire chain was like just almost it was rubbing against the brake drum. Let's just say that. So I ended up just taking that damn thing off, and I rode with three tires. I drove about another mile, and then they lifted the chain law, and I took I just took the chains off and stuck them back on my rack, and I drove. Like by that time, the the snow plows had come, and they salted the ground, and uh, and then they like right after right after like maybe a mile or two down the road clear roads blue skies still five degrees but beautiful so I get it to Arcadia it's a load of onions okay I get it and I, I lied on my last video I said it was 2200 miles no it was like 30 three, they paid me for 3000 miles but I ended up driving like 3100 after everything was said and done 3300 miles and I'm explaining that now I get to Walmart I make on-time delivery I am incredibly proud of myself because I was working with limited time with my clock I had to really skirt around stuff for my clock you know I had to run on recaps at that point so I was getting like seven hours back here 
eight hours back here, nine hours back here. These aren't full driving days. And I, the first two days I drove so hard that I, I'm getting back tonight. I'm getting back 11 hours and 30 minutes. And then tomorrow I'm getting back 11 hours and 45 minutes of clock. That's how hard I ran those, those first two days on the trip. I had to get as many miles off the load as I could. Then I just ran on recaps and I left myself with about an hour to 30 minutes each time I, I ran that. So I get to Walmart, I go to deliver the load. It takes them like five or six hours to finally get me unloaded. It, they always take their sweet ass time when it comes to, to Walmarts. Hell, even at this place I'm at, it's not even a Walmart and they're, they're taking their sweet ass time getting me unloaded too. They've I, like so many people have come and gone and yet I'm still here, but I was on time. So they rejected like 160 bags of onions or 160 cases of onions because of decay. I sit at that Walmart for another two hours waiting for risk management or claims to get with me and I get it, you know, the maybe the customer hasn't gotten back to them in time, you know, so she goes, hey, go ahead and head to this place called Mac Farms. I'll give you a PO here in a bit. I'm like, all right, so she sends me an address. My GPS doesn't know where the hell this place is. Uh, so I look on Google. It's the same address that's on Google, but it's just the GPS doesn't know where this place is at. So I just drug a pin, dropped it, and drove to the pin. There's no truck stops near this place. This is literally like a farm with a, with a little warehouse in it, right? So I get to this place. It's still daylight, beautiful outside. It's about two and a half to three hours away from civilization and where I was. So I drove that far. I got there. I stopped. I parked because there was plenty of spots uh, at this place. The doors were open, so I thought somebody was there. I walk in, there's nobody there. The warehouse is completely open. Like, forklifts are there, the keys are in the forklifts. Offices are open, the computers are exposed. Uh, there's like a break room, and then there's bathrooms. And I figured they left the doors open so that drivers that stay the night there can go to the bathroom at night, which is very nice. But at the same time, I feel like, man, it's a great place to get murdered, you know? Uh, I just imagine there'd be a whole bunch of wildlife out there just waiting to tear my throat out. You know, there was nowhere to hide. If something, if there was like a pack of coyotes coming after me or some shit, or a herd of alligators, because I was in Florida, coming after me, there'd be nowhere for me to run. Because everything is open and, oh man, I'd have to do some parkour shit. I'd probably end up hurting myself. So they're closed. And I got, I never got the PO the night before claims does not do a good enough job keeping people updated on what's going on i woke up the next morning and i waited i didn't get i went in got in line at seven o'clock in the morning because that's when receiving opened up it was a first come first serve i signed in without a, a a po number it was like a 205 number i needed for them to be able to take these onions off me which i had to have gotten from claims so I call my fleet manager and I feel like somebody pissed him off that morning because he was very short tempered, uh, which I didn't fucking do anything. So I don't know why the hell he was getting on me or why he was giving me attitude. But yeah, he had a, he had an attitude, um, which didn't help my mood because I'd been sitting there from the whole fucking night before on my fuel, the reefers on continuous have you like, I'm just burning money right now because they said they claim decay that i did not see any decay on those onions now it could have been on the inside or something i don't know how the hell they test them did they pull all those pallets off and check each individual fucking onion like i don't know maybe they did I don't, i'm not sure so i sit there i don't leave that place until like 12 o'clock in in the afternoon so that that oh my god seven days that that load took me right and that started like two days into the next week which worked out because you know 6600 bucks plus the tension and fuel surcharge which i'm hoping i get some reefer fuel surcharge too because i had to run it on continuous i filled it up three times that trip 3100 miles 
crappy ass gas mileage. Then from there, I got this load where I go to Brandonton, which is another two and a half hours back in the same direction I just fucking came from to go pick up a chopped can load and take it here where I am for a thousand dollars roughly, which I mean, I, I guess uh, maybe a little over a dollar a mile for that load. So uh, that coming out of Florida is pretty decent. Plus, I wanted to get into training class. I And I talked to my fleet manager, and he stuck my name back in the pot. So we'll see if I get approved for that. I need to get my hair taken care of. I'm getting out of hand with this shit here. It's starting to get on my damn nerves. Um, I need to get my truck. If the stickers... I need to get the fucking light replaced on the front. I want to get this cattle guard looked at. Like one of the bolts fucking fell off of it. So now it's like... I was driving. That was another thing that happened. I was driving and all of a sudden my radar was flipping out. It was like, I'm following too close. There's nobody in front of me. Well, when I finally stopped in my fuel stop, when I got out of my truck, my cattle guard was like this in front of my truck. Like this. In front of my truck. And my radar was hitting that and it thought it was a vehicle. So I was, I couldn't ride with cruise control for like two hours. I didn't even know that was what was going on. I thought there was just debris, it was snowing. I thought there was debris on the, on the, uh, something caked up or whatever. So I just rolled with it. I should have stopped and I should have inspected to see what was going on. But parking on the side of the road in the middle of the West on 80 with nothing near you, that's just as dangerous. Is just keeping on, keeping on, you know. And I was only, I don't know, like two, maybe two, one or two hours away from my uh, fuel stop. So I got that fixed. And then this, hopefully, if I can get this turned in soon, this will go on this week. It'll be an eight thousand dollar gross week, and with fuel, I, I'm at ten miles a gallon right now. This is a twenty five thousand pound load, and I ran it about six hundred and some change loaded, and I drove about two hours deadhead so I had a nice little buffer and then this load is two and a half hours away this next one 1800 bucks and it's a drop and hook on both ends which I haven't had I don't think I've talked about many drop and hooks being on both ends ever but I'm I'm not trying to lose that load but the only problem is it's eight o'clock in the morning this load isn't due to pick up until 2200 so it's 10 o'clock tonight is when I'm supposed to pick it up like I've slept I slept last night. I'm not tired. I'm gonna be tired when it's time to get this load. Like, whatever, I accepted it, it's fine. You know, I'm gonna make it work. That's how, that's why my schedule's been so jacked up. Like, I've had a very erratic sleep schedule and when I stop, I literally eat and fall asleep with the food in my hand. It's like, I, I've been running myself into the ground, but I need to make this, I need to make money this year. I need, this is gonna be my year. Last year, I'm gonna talk about this in a taxes video. I made $119,000 in six in six months with Prime. That's gross. Now, I didn't bring that home. Now, once I get my 1099 from fucking Stevens, I'll be able to file my taxes. Speaking of which, I need to get back with the CPAs. They just emailed me and said they didn't know who I was talking, who I was with. I was like, I sent the paperwork in. Like, I wish people, I wish that people did what they're supposed to do. Like, I did everything I was supposed to do. He, with the, with the minimal amount of information that he gave me, gave me. And with that minimal amount of information, I filled out the paperwork I needed to send him and it included all the stuff that he just asked me to resend him. So like, what, it lost in translation or whatever. It took him a month to finally get back to me to send me the stuff that I needed. I'm like, what am, what am I gonna be paying for, man? Am I, I mean, I'm paying some good money to have y'all help me. And I'm getting this already. Like, before y'all are even a customer of mine, like, this isn't a good look, man. Like, Abacus needs to get their shit together, too. They, I might have been a one-off, you know, they might have they might have had some, some hiccups or something, but one major thing, claims needs to be better at communicating with people. I called my fleet manager, he's like, I don't know, man, I'll, I'll get with this person. I called claims again, they're like, let me get with this person. Uh, Cause they're on the email thread. What do you mean get with this person? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on this load still. I'm here. My reefer's still going. Like I'm burning time. I'm burning money. Just sitting here. How do you not know what's going on other than that I am under a claim right now? Like, 
Oh man, they need better notations on the trucks. They need better communication with us We're out here when it comes to shit like that. Like being in the dark all this time, sitting here just at the mercy of Prime. Anyways, yeah. Hopefully I'll hear back in a couple of days on my training, whether I'll be able to train or not. Uh, they gotta accept me, which I don't agree with that. I've been driving, I'm, I've, I've been performing my job, I've been able to do it safely other than hitting that animal that I had no control over. I should be good. I haven't even started working on the questions and answers video, I'll be honest. I've been, uh, I've been just, it's, I, it took, I just woke up like 20 minutes ago and I told myself I need to do this because if I don't, it's going to be another freaking six days before I upload a video. So. I'm gonna try to be more frequent with these videos. It's just really difficult with the way that everything's working out. I'm definitely gonna document my training experience if I do get accepted with that. And I'm trying to get out of Mississippi to escape this ice storm that's supposed to hit. It's got any time, any time from now until midnight, it's supposed to hit an ice storm. So I'm trying to get the hell out of here, which I'm only going two and a half hours south until 10 o'clock tonight. 10 o'clock! Anyways, Mary Jess Ladies. Love it, hit it, ready, take care. I'll see you all another time.